This is a total body strength session that is designed for your luteal phase. This second half of the cycle is high hormone territory where we see both estrogen and progesterone are elevated. With that, we see some predictable changes in our performance. It takes us longer to sweat, which means we have to get hotter before we start to cool down. Our bodies are a little bit more stingy with carbs because of the reproductive priorities that are present in the second half of the cycle, which means we have a preference for fatty acid utilization, and it's a slower metabolic pathway, so higher intensities can feel more challenging. We also see a trend toward catabolic metabolism where our bodies are very quickly breaking things down, and we have that increased metabolic rate. So we are using more calories at our baseline than we are in the first half of the cycle. All of those signs point to a decrease in training intensity in this time during this phase of the cycle. So we lower our weight range from the follicular phase by 10 to 20, maybe even 30%. We slow things way down and we focus on more of that steady state effort. We work in the endurance training mode. So we are utilizing those slower burning metabolic pathways and we're supporting our physiology during this time rather than trying to compete with those reproductive priorities and perhaps amplifying those qualities of catabolic metabolism, which can lead to muscle weight Wasting. And in that state, the body becomes more prone to stress when we have higher sympathetic drive from hormones. And that can, can promote fat storage because your body kind of goes into a, a preservation mode. So rather than promoting those metabolic states with high intensity exercise, we are toning things down for today. That's just what our workout does. <laughs> with the use of lighter weights, longer intervals, we are in endurance training for total body today. We have three different sets of work, each with three exercises, and we're only doing each set twice. So we are decreasing the overall volume, but our individual working sets will be slightly longer. So we have those full one minute working intervals. The goal is to get 12 or more reps of of each exercise to put you in the endurance mode. We'll have those back-to-back -back exercises with just a short recovery interval in between each set to help you kind of reset, shake things off, and get into the next round of work. And then we'll switch to a, another three exercises after we complete two rounds of each. That weighted portion of the workout comes in just over 20 minutes. So with your five-minute warm-up and cool-down, it's a 30-minute experience from start to finish. You always have the option of adding the finisher to the end. This one is an isometric finisher. For me, it, it speaks to the luteal phase. This is signature movement for the luteal phase where we're in the isometric pattern, we are working on that isometric endurance. It's a fun one. It's challenging, but it won't be overly activating. So it should leave you walking away feeling very grounded after your practice. But again, that one's totally optional. It will add five minutes to your workout time. As always, I've included a workout preview in the description of this video below. You can always click to that separate, separate video to get a full overview of all of the movement patterns. And in today's practice, there are several exercises where you might benefit from modifications, especially if knee flexion, for instance, is particularly challenging or if you're new to a strength training practice. So be sure to check that out if you are new or if you're working without the guided video. And for now, it's time to get to work. Let's jump right into our total body warm up for today. We have 10 different exercises that we'll enjoy for 30 seconds each to get your body ready for strength training. So we'll get started in about 10 seconds here. We're starting with an overhead squat. So I want you to bring your feet about shoulder width, maybe slightly wider apart. Let's inhale, take the arms overhead, press your palms toward the ceiling. And let's squat it down, big breath. And as you come up, side bend, stretch out the side waist. So inhale, come down and exhale over to the other side. So we're just alternating here, really trying to lengthen both sides of the waist, warming up the legs, the upper body, starting to connect to your breath rhythm. So try to map your movement onto each breath. Breathe in and out. We're gonna to switch to our reverse lunge next with a lat pull, arms start overhead. As you exhale, lunge and hug the elbows into your sides. This can be nice and slow to start. There's no rush. We'll have a full five minutes to prepare the body for our strength training. 
So I really want you to focus here on activating the back and working on that unilateral balance in the legs. Last three here, two, and one. Stay in your lunge, bring your hands behind your head. Left leg is forward. Let's exhale, take the right elbow to the left knee and come back to center. Exhale, twist, find your balance. Here, I want you to focus on fixing the position of the hips and really freeing the upper back. So you might even take the open twist at the top and then rotate. So you're trying to wrap the rib cage under. After this, we're coming into our tabletop. Let's move there now. Here, I want you to come into your cow spine, so soften the belly, inhale, gaze up. And then as you exhale, cat spine, hover the knees just a touch. Inhale, extend, drag the heels of the hands and the knees toward each other. And as you exhale, round, hover the knees off the mat. Inhale, big breath. And exhale, round in, hover the knees. Feel that core activation. Last one here. And then we'll take the right foot forward, hands behind your head, alternating twist here. So we take the left elbow to the right knee this time. And again, you can add that little bit of an open twist just to get the full range of motion in the rib cage in the upper back here. So you are toning the legs, hugging the inner thighs energetically to the center to stabilize the hips, to keep them in the same position. After this, we're transitioning to downward facing dog. We'll head that direction next. So both feet back, come into your downward dog. Then we're gonna roll forward to plank, knees touch down, push up. Come back to plank, bend your knees, launch position, come forward, optional knees up or knees down, and back. So we're just alternating between this launch position and a push up. Waking up the chest, the spine here, last one. And then we'll take the right leg forward, come into your spider lunge, so nice deep lunge. We're just gonna circle that right arm back and then take the elbow to the inner edge of your right foot. So open the shoulder and then come back down. Again here, we are fixing the position of the hips. So we're not letting the hips twist or rotate. We're keeping that position stable and working just a little bit more space, a little bit more freedom in the hips. After this, we're turning to our side lunge. So bend deeply into one side. We're gonna reach the arms forward and then stretch it back. So we're just alternating here from one side to the other, broadening across the chest and then squeezing the thumbs toward each other. So imagine like a chest press here. Inhale and exhale. In about five seconds, we'll switch to our lunge on the left side now. So turn over your left foot, come into that spider lunge, open the left arm up, nice big circle, and then take that left elbow to the left heel. So we open it up, full range of motion in the shoulder here, and come back down. Should be feeling some generous heat now waking up the body, getting ready for your strength training session. Last one here. And then we're going to step the feet together, come into your ball pose squat. So lift the heels, stretch the soles of the feet, and then very gently fold. So your legs might move in the direction of straight, but you can keep as much of a bend as you need for right now in the beginning of your practice. You wanna lift up through the chest and then exhale, fold. Breathe in and out. Feel the legs waking up here. So from head to toe, nice and warm. Let's stay in this forward bend and very slowly roll up bone by bone, taking your time if you need to. Before you come all the way up to stand, we'll enjoy a huge breath in. Sigh it out, exhale. That is your total body warm up for today, and now you're ready to get into your strength training. 
Now that you are all warmed up, we are going to get into our luteal phase workout. For this one, it's a total body workout, so you want a weight selection that will work for both your upper and lower body. We're pairing exercises together, and you should be able to use a very similar weight for both the lower body movement pattern and the upper body movement pattern. I have my working weight, and then in the luteal phase, I always like to have a contingency set of weights. So that's the one that I will reach for if the intensity starts to climb too high or if my form starts to go. So the luteal phase, we're really wanting to move slowly to load each movement pattern. So it's nice to have those two options if they are available to you. You can always drop down to a single weight or single sided movement as well. Our structure for today, we're working in three tri sets. So we'll complete each one in just two sets of work. So you'll have just two times through, not a whole lot of volume in today's practice, but we are working to longer intervals. So we're doing each exercise for a minute each, and we only have 10 seconds to transition in between because we are in that low intensity. We want to stay steady state. We're not going too high. So we want to keep that continuous work throughout. And then we'll rest for an additional 30 seconds between sets or between our, our different tri sets. So between different exercises, <clears throat> I will keep track of the time for you. So don't sweat it. I'll guide you through every step of the way. We will start in about 20 seconds. We're starting in a tabletop position. You can be either in a bear plank with the knees hovering or in full tabletop with the knees down. If you start to feel this at all in your lower back, I want you to keep those knees down on the ground. Otherwise, you can come into your bear plank position. We're closing that gap between hip points and low ribs, hovering the knees, and it's a row. So we're simply taking it back and down. <clears throat> the key here is to keep the shoulders and the hips even, so we're not letting them rotate with that weight. Should feel some very strong core activation. I want you to take the elbow straight back, hug it in close to the body. Breathe out as you pull. Try not to let the lower belly collapse. You'll feel that in your lower back right away. If the low belly checks out, and if that happens, you're bringing the knees down. You're focusing only on that row element of the movement. It's a great way to really still cultivate core strength, but without any of the strain in the lower back. Otherwise, you're hovering the knees, you're in your bare plank, moving nice and slow. We've got about five more seconds, and then we're going to switch it up. We've got 10 seconds to transition. It's nice and quick. We're coming into a kneeling hip thrust. Weight is behind you. You're going to take those hips to the heels. Lower down as far as you can. Come up. Press the arms straight. Tricep extension. So we fold forward. We close the gap between ribs and thighs. And then we squeeze up using those glutes to extend the hips. Use your breath here. Really pay attention to those signals from your body. You want to get to the point where your breathing has to change. So yes, you will breathing, be breathing more through the mouth, but you're not gasping for air. You're just below that high intensity threshold where speaking becomes difficult, where you might only be able to get a few words out at a time. We want to flirt with that edge, but stay just below it in the luteal phase. So we're around 50 to 70% of our max effort. It's sustainable and it feels good. After this, we're gonna stay in the kneeling position. You're gonna bring your weight down in front. We're transitioning now to a curl, and from the curl, a front press. So here, we'll get ready, curl it up, squeeze the biceps, press, nice and slow. I want you to really focus on keeping that spine in the aligned position, so you're not leaning forward or leaning back as you come through that front press. This is bonus core work right here. Front press, one of my favorites for Targeting the upper body, yes. We'll get your arms, shoulders, and back, but you're also cultivating that deep core integration to stabilize the spine as you move the weight out on that lever arm. So we're increasing the tension as we move the weight further away from the body. And we're using the core to keep the spine from 
acting as a counterbalance and leaning away. We've got under 10 seconds here and then our 30 second break before we come in for one more set of this first group of three exercises and rest. So you're coming back to that bear plank row or the tabletop row. Again, take the option that feels best in your body and make any adjustments that you need to. Do you need to slow it down? Do you need to drop down the weight? Check in with your breath, notice how you're feeling and make those, those adjustments moving forward. That's the cyclical intelligence at play. So we've got neutral spine and hover the knees if you wish. We pull it back and down. I want you to kind of reset every time you bring the weight back down so that you know your shoulders and your hips are square. The luteal phase, we want to eliminate the rush and the urgency. We want to really slow it down, focus on muscle control. And here, that all comes out of the core activation. So shoulders are even, hips are even, belly is online and awake. Again, you can always take the knees down and focus just on that row, especially if you start to feel this at all in the lower back. Always a good option. Use your breath here for three, two, and one. Dropping down to a single weight now. Again, we're coming to that hip thrust with a tricep extension. Weight comes behind you, wrap your elbows in, lower the hips to the heels, come up, straighten the arms. Don't sweat it. If you can't get your hips to your heels, if that's too much flexion in the knee, I want you to just come down to wherever it's comfortable and then press through the shins, activate the glutes to extend the hips. Breathe in and out. So you can kind of take out the hard edges in this movement flow from the lower body pattern right into that upper body pattern here. These longer intervals, we are aiming for more than 12 reps. So you wanna be getting maybe 14, 15, even 16 reps. If you can, within that minute interval, we've got five seconds left. And that puts you in the endurance zone. And it helps us keep the weight light because moving for a full minute with heavy weights is not sustainable, especially when we're back to back. Biceps curl with that front press. Here we go. Stay with it. Keep your elbows hugging in super close to the body. And then we just straighten those elbows out and come back to the starting position. And that's how we can isolate the biceps here by squeezing those elbows into the outer ribs. Make sure your shoulders are staying nice and relaxed away from the ears. And that you're not leaning forward or back. That you've got that stable position, that anchor in the spine that you can then move that weight away along that longer lever arm. Squeeze it up. We've got just about 15 more seconds and then we will transition to a new set of exercises. And this one we will come up to a standing position. So get ready to move that direction in about five seconds. and rest, take the weight down. We are going to need both weights for this next set of work. We're starting with a dumbbell deadlift. We'll move to a front squat and then we have a strict press. So for the dumbbell deadlift, feet are shoulder width apart. You're just going to close that fold of the body. So you're bringing heart, belly, chest to the thighs, bending deeply into the knees. Go ahead and grab your weight, tilt them slightly downward. You're tracking the center line of the foot, the whole way down, the whole way up. Breathe in and out. So I really want you to feel like you're loading the legs and then unloading, almost like a spring. So feel that slow load of the spring and then let it go. Breathe in and out. This should feel fairly light for the dumbbell deadlift. 
This is one of those movement patterns that you might be used to loading very heavily. So I want you to feel how you can cultivate more mind muscle connection with the lighter weight. How can you maintain core activation and tap into the legs? Maybe you're pushing a little bit more firmly with the heels into the mat. Maybe you are drawing the shoulder blades back to keep the core engaged. We've got five more here, two and one. Quick transition, 10 seconds, we're coming into our front squat. So weight is on the anterior deltoid, the meaty part of the shoulder. Feet are shoulder width or slightly wider. Come down and up. So I want the knees to be aligned with the second and third toes. And look for that position of the knees so you're not splaying out or collapsing in. And also the position of the spine. So this is the squat movement pattern, which means we're sitting back into that chair, keeping the spine lifted and upright. Again, if you need to, this is a, a demanding movement pattern, the front squat. If you find that your heart rate is climbing too quickly, you can always slow it way down. You can always drop to lighter weights or to a single weight. We've got five more seconds. Three, two, and one. I'm gonna set the weights down just for a moment. We're coming into our strict press next. So this is one where we wanna be heavy enough for the legs, but sustainable for the arms. So I'm going to alternate sides, especially being that this is the luteal phase. I don't want that intensity to creep up too high. So we're just alternating. We've got that neutral grip. So we're not taking the elbows out wide. And that allows us to work in a slightly heavier range while still staying in the sweet spot for the luteal phase. We wanna be in that heavier range because we don't wanna fuss with swapping out the weights between upper and lower body. So we're here, just alternating sides. You should still be able to get into the endurance zone with 12 or more reps. We're here for just over 10 seconds, and then we've got our 30 second recovery. As you take the weights overhead, make sure you're lifting hip bones and low ribs together. We're not leaning side to side or forward and back. You can set those weights down in position for your dumbbell deadlift. Take a few arm circles, a little stroll around your mat, whatever you need to, to get set up for our second and last set of these three exercises. So in about 10 seconds, we'll come back to that dumbbell deadlift. Grab your weights, tilt them slightly down. Again, you're tracking the center line of the outer edge of your foot. Let's get ready and heart, belly, chest to the thighs, bend the knees deeply and open up. So I want you to feel those two phases of the movement where we're lower, lowering down and then opening up. Your neck is neutral. Try to avoid looking forward or looking back down too far. You wanna keep the crown of the head stretching away from the sitting bones so if you feel that stretch across the glutes that you can then load powerfully with the deadlift. So we get that stretch across the glutes and then the contraction. So we flex the hips and extend. We're just moving, alternating between these two body positions. We've got 10 more seconds here. Again, pay attention to your heart rate. If it starts climbing too high, you can always drop down in weight and rest. 10 seconds, I'm gonna set the weights down for a moment and then we'll come into our front squat. It's a nice, Quick transition, grab your weight and begin. Here we go. Squat it down and up. I want you to try and eliminate the urgency. So really take that full breath in and a slow breath out as you come up. Focus your attention inward. What can you notice about this body position, about this movement pattern? Where do you feel it in your legs? 
Can you sit back a little bit more into the heels? Can you lift up a little bit more through the chest without overarching the lower back? So we keep the low spine neutral. That's gonna help us develop more range of motion in the hips, which is where we want it. Low spine, very hypermobile. So it's a little bit redundant, but it's hypermobile here. So we wanna keep that spine neutral and rest. I'm gonna set the weights down again, just for a moment to shake it out. Strict press is next. This is our final exercise of this set. Let's get ready. Push it up and back down. Again, you might need to slow things way down with this continuous steady state level of effort. We want it to feel sustainable. You want to feel like you can still take a very deep breath where you're not gasping for air. And what I want this to illustrate for you is you can work hard in the luteal phase. Absolutely. You don't have to check out for two weeks to avoid burnout. You can still do the hard things. We just need to change our approach. So rather than going all out, we slow it down. We focus on control. We focus on the breath so that we keep that stress response in the healthy range and rest. Set that weight down. I'm going to switch to my lighter weight for this next set of work. We're doing a half kneeling chop. So this one, you'll have a single weight. You're gonna take it to your back hip without rotating the hips and then cross your body to the opposite corner. So it's down and back. We will pair that with a side lunge and a reverse fly. Again, all with that lighter weight. Here we go, let's begin. So I want you to feel that power from your back hip across the belly up to the opposite corner. If straight arms is too much, you can bend the elbows and come into more of a diagonal curl to the opposite side. I want you to keep it sustainable. We don't wanna take any strain away in the lower back. We want that freedom to move. The lower back is working, yes, but it doesn't need to be overstrained. Take it to the back hip, cross the body. It's also a reason that I like to drop down and wait for this exercise. I certainly could push with that heavier load, but I find I'm able, able to more deeply integrate the activation of those deep layers of core when the weight is lighter. It allows for more of that focus. And rest. We're going to come up for our side lunge now. So you're gonna take the weight in one hand, come to the opposite foot with a reverse fly. Here we go. So we touch down, open out to the side, transition through center, swap the weight to the other side. Open it out and come back up with that reverse fly. You've got a micro bend in the elbow. You're targeting right at the shoulder blade. So you're pressing that shoulder blade onto the back, keeping the spine nice and neutral, neutral, nice and straight, not allowing it to twist. Your toes can turn slightly out so long as your knee is in that same angle, that same alignment. So just take notice there, make sure you've got that strong loading angle in the knee. You can have your opposite hand to your hip or out to the side. I like to bring it out to the side just to keep my spine straight so that it doesn't twist. Come through center, just five more seconds. And rest, we'll come back to that half kneeling position for the wood chop on the other side. So again, you're coming to your back knee and coming crossing to the opposite corner. I want you to keep your back toes untucked and really press through the back shin and then hug the inner thighs energetically to the midline as if they were side by side. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Keep the rib cage telescoping out of the pelvis. So you want that long, lean side waist. And then we're crossing over. So 
And there's no point through this movement where we're crunching into the side waist or the low spine, but we keep that length the entire time. Cross, twist, and to the other side. So again, if you need to, you can be taking it to the opposite shoulder. In that case, I would hold the weight in the vertical position so that you can more easily swing it over your shoulder. Last three, two, and one. 30 seconds rest here. And then we have, again, just one more round through. We'll start on the other side with the chop, move to our side lunge, and then we will complete the weighted portion of this workout. So come into our half kneeling position. Again, I want the back toes to stay untucked. So you've got this nice straight line in the back shin, straight line with the front foot. You're pressing down through all points of contact with the floor. Let's get ready, two and one, down and swing. So it is a swing. We are using some power to get that weight up and across, but I want you to stay in control. So you are generating all the power from the hips and core, and you are in control of that weight. It's not dropping down, especially want you to slow that return back to your starting point. Twist and back down. Again, you're trying to keep your hips mostly square to the front and cross the body. Super glad that I chose the lightweight for this one. When you're doing it right, when you are recruiting the core, the hips, and this one is challenging, even with just a 10 pound dumbbell. Three, two, one. Let's switch to our side lunge. I say just a 10 pound dumbbell. I remember when I started this practice, 10 pounds was my heavy weight. Let's begin. It was my leg weight. I used the 10 pound dumbbells for squats, for deadlifts. And now after four plus years of this practice, it's now my light weight. So I don't mean to use the word just to say it's only 10 pounds because 10 pounds is heavy. 10 pounds is a load and 10 pounds can be where you're starting and that is just fine. So it might mean that in your luteal phase, you're using three pound dumbbells. You're dropping that weight significantly down. Maybe you're working with body weight only. You are in the practice no matter where you start and where you land. So <laughs> my apologies for minimizing <laughs> that 10 pound weight by saying it's just 10 pounds because that can be very heavy. <sighs> and we'll switch. I have to remember which side I started on. Make sure you switch legs here. We'll come to that wood chop next. Here we go. Cross and to the opposite corner. So for me, it takes a few reps. The first few, I'm usually not completely embodied. So maybe forcing the movement from the outside in. So it takes a few reps to really connect and integrate, and then you develop the power. You generate that movement from the back hip across to the opposite shoulder. Again, we're keeping those hips mostly square. We're allowing the shoulders to rotate because the more <laughs> cross you can get with that weight, the longer the lever arm and the greater the tension. <sighs> cross the body. We're here for just 10 more seconds. You got this. So you should be breathing nice and easy, but you should start to feel that accumulation of the work in that longer interval, that one minute interval. Let's set those weights down. Take a few arm circles here, maybe stroll around your workout space. That is the weighted portion of this workout. Hopefully your heart rate is in that very sustainable place. And if you wish, you can skip right ahead to the cool down next by using the timestamps in the video description. However, if you want to enjoy some isometric work with our finisher, it's body weight only, it's just five minutes. We'll head that direction next.
Let's jump right into this isometric bodyweight finisher. We're starting with my favorite, the wall sit. So I'm gonna to come to this wall so that I have a little bit more space and a flat surface. You're going to lower into position. We've got about 15 seconds before our one minute timer starts. I want your knees to be over ankles. Your hips are slightly above or slightly below the knees. Back is flat on that wall. And I want you to drive through the heels. So you might even lift the toes off the floor. Make sure your shoulders are pressing into the wall. Our minute starts now. <laughs> here we go. So we're here for just a minute. I want you to refine this position. So curl the tail slightly under, press your shoulders into the wall like you're holding that wall up. Squeeze the inner thighs to the midline, drive through the heels, lift your toes. Keep all of that working for you. So continue to iterate. Curl the tail under, press the shoulders into the mat, lift the toes, hug the inner thighs to the midline. We got this. I want you to breathe in nice and slow. See if you can relax the muscles in your face. Sometimes I press my hands on my legs, but that does take some of the work out of the legs. So you might relax your hands on your thighs. After this, we're coming straight into our plank. So get ready to move. We're going to slowly come out, come right to your mat, into your plank. So now we refine it once again. Hug the heels of the hands and the ball mounds of the feet together. Stretch the crown of your head forward, lengthen the spine. Curl your sitting bones toward your inner heels. Draw the pubic bone toward the navel. Make sure you're not hiking your hips up or collapsing them down. We've got that strong plank position. So we're alternating here between plank and a wall sit, and then we'll come to boat, and then we'll finish with a wall sit. We've got 30 more seconds in plank here, and then you're going to come right back up to the wall. So get ready for that quick and smooth transition. Breathing here. Soften the muscles in your face. Maybe lift the corners of your mouth into a smile. Feel that work. We've got five more seconds. And then we're slowly going to walk it up, right back to your wall space, drop it in, nice and smooth. We've got a minute here. You might close your eyes, maybe bring a hand to your heart. Feel that sort of circuit of energy inside. Breathing nice and steady. See if you can create that inner sense of calm even with this significant challenge with the wall sit. We've got less than 30 seconds to go. Stay with me. Drive through those heels, lift the toes. Notice what that does to the sensation. I know the legs might be burning just a little bit. See if you can again, press the shoulder blades into the wall, curl the tail slightly under. We're coming into boat pose next. So get ready to move to the mat. In three, two, one, come right to your seat. Lift the knees up. I'm gonna keep my hands on the mat at first. So you make sure that your chest can stay elevated. I want you to squeeze the inner thighs to the midline. And then if you wish, you're reaching the hands alongside your shins. This should feel pretty strong in the quads after that wall sit. So I really want you to squeeze the inner thighs to the center, lift the heart and chest up. You might even practice straightening one leg and then straightening the other, straightening both legs, full boat and back. So just creating a little bit of flow in this isometric work can sometimes help ease some of the friction that you might feel for a particular movement pattern. We're here for five. Right back up to the wall. Let's head that direction next. We're finishing it out with our wall sit. Drop into position. And we're here for just a minute more. This is your finisher. This is where we are creating that isometric endurance. Great work for the luteal phase. Focus your gaze. Soften the face. Notice where, when it gets hard, where you start to hold tension, where you maybe grip a little bit, 
And then notice what happens in your mind when things get hard. Do you start to try and distract yourself, pull yourself out of the effort because it's challenging? Can you stay present? Can you notice something? Notice your legs. Notice your glutes. Feel the quads. This one's so good for the quads. We are so close to the end here. Stay with it. And rest nice and easy. Come up and out of that wall sit. That is your isometric finisher. I want you to shake out the legs a little bit, and then we will show your whole body some love with your cool down next. You have just put in the work, and now it is time to cool down. We're going to start in a nice wide position with the feet. Just give your shoulders a bit of a shrug, and we will take the arms behind, interlace your fingers, send your knuckles toward the ground, stretch across the chest. Make sure you're drawing those front ribs in. Really isolate the chest here. Take a big breath in, and only if it feels comfortable, I want you to fold over the legs. Let the head be level with the heart and hips. Really press through the outer edges of both feet. Send your knuckles skyward now. Stretch through the chest. You can release the hands here for a moment. Maybe sway the hips side to side. And then we're going to turn over that right foot. Let your back knee come down. Hands are to the inside. I want you to bring your right hand to your right thigh. Press down and forward. Twist the heart open. Keep the hips square to the front. If you wish, you can bring your forearm down to the mat. Find that deep lizard lunge. So nice stretch for the hip flexor, the inner hips. We'll be here just a few more seconds. And then slowly come up through center. We're just going to alternate with our side lunge here, reaching forward. So I want you to keep those arms outstretched and just slide nice and easy side to side. Feel that stretch across the inner thighs. Keep the shoulders lifted. Press the palms away. Maybe take opposite shoulders here. You can even stretch open and closed here. And we'll turn to our lizard lunge on the left side now. So hands to the inside, pivot on the back foot, lower the back knee down. Left hand to the left thigh, press down and forward to twist the heart towards the left. And then you have the option of lowering to the forearm here. As best as you can, keep the hips square to the front. Keep pressing down and forward on your left thigh to keep twisting that left shoulder open. Last couple of breaths here. Then we'll slowly release. We'll come into one of my favorites, the puppy pose, but with dolphin arms. So bring the palms to touch, elbows about shoulder width apart, soften heart, belly, chest between the upper arms. This is a stretch you will see in almost every cool down, every workout that I do. It's so supportive for returning the spine to resting length alleviating any residual tension and then we'll slowly come up i want you to take your knees to the left i'll be opposite you in movement in this zigzag shape and then start to turn your body over your left shin fold over that left leg so you can start to open it up a little bit more if that feels good this is modified pigeon pose so i want you to feel this in the outer left hip can kind of heel toe the shin more to a 90 degree bend in the knee if you wish and just really feeling that stretch maybe bringing the pubic bone closer to the floor and then we'll slowly press up take your right hand to your left knee left hand behind you nice easy twist I want you to keep the back knee inner knee pressing down into the floor so you get a little bit of that hip flexor sensation in this twist Keep the shoulders over the hips, nice and lifted through the spine, so avoid rounding or collapsing in the upper back. And we'll slowly transition through center. So just windshield wiper the legs, switch so that your knees are to the right. You can bring that shin closer to the 90 degree bend and then fold over that right leg. Again, I want you to tilt the pelvis slightly forward, so moving, moving the pubic bone toward the floor. Sending the pubic bone slightly back so you feel that stretch in the outer hip. Allowing your breath to slow and soften. 
Then we'll slowly walk it up. Bring your right hand behind, left hand to the right knee. Nice, easy twist. And here the key is to keep the inner knee of the back leg grounded so that you get that lengthening in the hip flexor. I want you to really lift out of the right hip crease. Let's really lift the rib cage out of the pelvis here. Last couple of breaths. And then we'll slowly turn the feet to the front of your mat. Bring the heels of your hands behind you, fingers point out. I want you to lift up through the chest first and then slowly press through the heels of the hands, find upward tabletop. So you can walk your feet out so that your ankles are under your knees. You might send the head back if that feels good or keep the gaze straight ahead. I want you to curl the sitting, the hip bone, excuse me, toward the low ribs. Press through the heels of the hands to stretch the chest. Last two and one. Nice and easy, lower down, shake out the arms. We'll make our way back up to standing super slow. So come through your forward bend, relax the head and neck just a moment, and then walk your hands up your legs, find that halfway lift, and then slowly all the way to stand. Let's enjoy our last breath together. Inhale and exhale, release. That completes your total body cool down for today. I hope it felt like just enough to reset your nervous system and to show your body some love. If you have extra time, you could always run through it one once more, or you can stretch a little bit more on your own, whatever your body needs. But for now, this is where we part ways. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today and for letting your body be moved.